Hello, welcome back everyone. Welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Ryan Salvi, and we're with Fabiola Lara. And um, today we're going to be looking at some of the generative uh, AI that you can make to have a co-pilot in uh, which, which program are we working in today? We're working in Adobe Fresco. We're working in Adobe Express, Photoshop, Firefly. I mean, there's so many. I'm covering a lot of programs here. Oh, that's so exciting. So you are uh, been on Adobe Live several times, but you predominantly uh, <laughs> are an illustrator. Um, Correct. And I guess to tell anyone who doesn't know who you are, kind of your your little pitch. Yeah. So I'm an illustrator. I'm based in Philadelphia. I like to draw really colorful things and make videos about my work. I also have a podcast called Draws in Spanish, oh. where I chat with Latin American artists about their creative career. Um, and their culture as well. So yeah, that's a little bit, a little pitch about me. But today, I'm really excited. I'm using Firefly to kind of develop some reference sketches, some reference images to use for sketches. And then we're taking it, we're taking it across the Creative Cloud suite today. Uh, and it's, it was really fun. I, of course, I already did this, but I want to show you how I did it. <laughs> and it was really fun too to do. So I think it's going to be like a really nice. Uh, process. If you're an illustrator who hasn't quite figured out how to incorporate AI into your workflow, or if you already uh, use it and you want to use Express to animate, you know, right. like it's so it's so easy. No, that's great. Also, hello to everyone that's in the chat. Thank you, Wade, for being our moderator today. Yes. Hello to Wade Acuff. Also, hello to uh, Sita and Marsha. Good to see you guys again. We saw you earlier this morning. Also, hello to Sin. And then over on YouTube, we also have George. So uh, this is George's first stream, so we've got to make this very interesting. So thank you for tuning in, George. It's good to have you here. Um, and I'm excited to hop into what we're working on. Yes, shout out to George. Thanks for being here. So I want to start off with uh, Firefly. And I'm going to tell you my idea. And so. The concept for this is I was kind of thinking about what I could make that would use the Photoshop, not the Photoshop, the Adobe Express animations. Um, and also I wanted to do a Halloween theme. So we're going to generate, I want to create three little illustrations, almost like vignettes or something. Uh, and I'm going to use, wait, I, I clicked it without telling you what I clicked on, uh, text to image which is so fun. Have you played with it? Oh, yeah, I love it. It's great. It's, I use it also in Firefly, and I also use it within Photoshop, too. Yes, generative AI in Photoshop is great. So here it's really fun because historically, if, if you also illustrate, you just like randomly try to find images that will work for yeah. this idea that you have in your head, and you don't have to struggle anymore trying to find that. Uh, I wanted to do, I want to draw a spider, a like a Halloween spooky spider, friendly, not threatening. Right. Right. Okay. Uh, a friendly, skull. A friendly. Friendly skull. Friendly Everything spider. is friendly in this in this series. So a friendly skull, a friendly spider, and kind of like some Halloween friendly eyeballs floating in, okay. floating in like gooey. Stew. But how did they get into the gooey thing? They got they got friendly taken away from someone's skull. We don't know. We don't, we, know. We don't ask we don't questions. Hey, I'm not. It, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just creating the world. I don't have the story. That's up okay. to the interpretation of the viewer. Yeah, all right. All cool. art is. Okay, Stand so up. the first thing I want to look for is a spider. So there's so many uh, ways to work with the text space editor, but I'm going to do spider coming down from web. Now, do you have arachnophobia? Are you actually scared of spiders in real life? I mean, they're not my favorite. Yeah. But I wouldn't say that I'm like terrified. But like, yeah, if right now you pulled out a tarantula, I would be quite upset. Okay, but if one like crawled across, would you smash it or would you want to save it and bring it outside? I would definitely run away. <laughs> the third the option. The stream would end. <laughs> so there better be no spiders in the actual room. Spider uh, coming down from a web. Okay. Yeah. And I chose, well, it automatically chose art for me, which I don't mind because if we do photo, which I'm going to just show you right now. So you see here it switched to photo. Mm -hmm. It gets like kind of realistic, and that's a little scary. And that's if, not what we're going for. It's not what we're going for. I kind of like to use photo reference, but like I just don't oh, want to wow. look at that. Okay. You know, yeah, like, no, I just, that's. I don't want to look at that. No, I'm not get into that. Out. Get it out. Okay. okay, cool, cool. So we're back to this. Um, What's in the second one? Is something flying over to it? A little. A little it's... innocent mosquito oh, or something. Oh no, he's doomed. He's doomed. He's, he's doomed. doomed. So I don't. Mm, this one could work. So I'm just yeah. gonna save it because I basically want just like the thread. Or the web? What's okay, wait. The so real quick, as you favorited that, now it's viewable in your favorites. How do you get to your favorites? Yeah, so if we go over, we click the A 
for Adobe Firefly mm-hmm. and for Adobe. Uh, <laughs> then you go to favorites. <laughs> uh, you'll see it. So no, don't look at all oh, my other look, things. Oh, see, don't I ruined it. See, things. I got ahead of ourselves. So. <laughs> no, but it's a great question. Okay. So I did that one. And then another, um, you can play around with the prompts. I feel like if you type in kind of an aesthetic, it will try to meet you there. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to do, because ha- it's a Halloween stream, I'm going to do Halloween um, spider coming down from string. I'm going to say string. Now, you said that you can put in some aesthetics. Are there any aesthetics that you feel like you gravitate towards that you see a lot that you like like to put in your prompts? Um, I just kind of play with colors a lot. So mm-hmm. I'll just be like neutral or I'll say pop or really colorful, vibrant, and then it'll yeah. kind of match that. But if I do Halloween, then it kind of it kind of goes where I want it to go in the sense of like, you can see this is a, ca- a Halloween color palette. Yeah. It's a bit more illustrative. What did it do here? I love that. We have a lot of things uh, happening. So I think this one's kind of cool. I feel like Ooh. I just need some inspo. So this right. is this kind of works. This one also I think has eight legs or more. Sometimes there's a lot of legs. So it's kind of funny that it does that. Oh, and Carol wants to know, are the favorites in the cloud then? Because instead it clogs up her hard drive. And yes, it should all be in the cloud for yeah. your favorites. So you don't have to worry about taking up hard drive space. Yeah, that's really cool. And you can always like come back and reference it if you down the line are like, I miss that image. Yeah. Um, so that's the one I'm gonna do for, now I have a few spider options. Another one that I'm gonna do, I wanna draw the the eyeballs in the goo, remember? Gross. So yeah, so I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna do Halloween, okay? This yeah. is for our own safety. Safety. Yeah, but if we just put eyeballs in the it goo, gets, it's like, gonna it's be weird. It's too much, yeah. So Halloween, eyeball, Bobby and goo. Um, perfect. I always knew it was an English, uh, major (laughs) i was not i'm not great at writing but um sometimes you need to get a little creative and also george since this is your first time here uh do you play around with firefly at all or is that something that's new to you as well Ooh, look at these crazy guys yeah so i if you do art it for some reason with eyeball it wants to go 3d which Mm kind of makes sense like yeah it didn't give us this for spiders okay yeah right but it's still cool and i am just using it as reference so this is kind of cool. Ultimately, like I'm gonna draw everything in my own style, so I'm not that um, picky on the style that I'm after. I just want to get like some cool ideas and just like some reference of of an eyeball because sometimes if you draw things just from your brain, I don't know about your experience, they come out a little too like cartoony, yeah. you know. And I if love you have, cartoons. It's so great, but goal. sometimes if you want something slightly more realistic, having that reference helps and i say that now but you'll see my my illustrations are not realistic at all okay yeah, so yeah. there's just you know i'm just i'm just chatting um sin is saying do you rather spooky halloween or goofy halloween and we're here for goofy halloween I we're, think. yes we're here for goofy not gory okay. and then the other one i wanted was the skull so i'm gonna do um medical skull and bones Yes, let's let's go for it. And hello to Alexia who just joined the chat over on YouTube. Welcome, welcome. If you have any questions while we're working along, please by all means throw them in the chat and I will relay them to Fabiola. We are yes. working in Firefly right now, which is included in Creative Cloud, and we're just generating some images for inspiration for some il- illustration. Yeah, so inspiration here, for illustration. Inspo for for Elo. Um, so I have <laughs> here um, some amazing skulls. I like this one. Oh, this one's Ooh, sideways. The spooky second one has a has like a demon he has, behind it. <laughs> he does. That's <laughs> crazy. Okay. And I like this like I am going for just um kind of a straight forward shot. What do you call that? Yeah. Straight, straight on. Yeah. Straight on. That, that works, yeah, yeah. Um but I bet we could do like a profile shot in the fo- in the prompt and it will probably like turn it. That's my guess. We're challenging it here. I haven't, okay. haven't that done this or it's going to be a bunch of selfies. Yeah, oh, here we there go. it is. Yeah. So this is great. So like, you don't have to search all of the internet to try and find the perfect reference photo. You can just prompt it yourself, and now right. you have it. Um, thankfully for me, I'm not going for an anatomically correct uh, one, right. so I wouldn't be worried about. <laughs> oh, 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 ooh, ooh, <laughs> we'll, we'll get away no, from that. Don't, yeah, oh, I didn't realize that. That is <laughs> don't look closely. Nasty. Don't look closely. Don't I have <laughs> that 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 whole thing with like lots of small oh, things really? together. Oh, I don't like it. So don't worry, we're safe. Yeah. So man. I actually already downloaded a lot of these, um, but all you do in order to download it is just go click this beautiful little download button. It looks like 
every download button you've ever come to expect, so no surprises there. <laughs> uh, you just hit download, and it does the content credentials and puts it in your um, downloads. I only downloaded it because I want to use it over in Adobe Fresco, and I want to import the image. Okay. Um, and that's how I do it, but... It's a, it everyone's got their ways. workflows. Everyone, everyone has different ways to do it. Also, Chrome now puts it up in the top right, which I'm still getting used to. It used to be on the bottom. Yeah, it does do that, and I'm just like, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know why you're up there. I don't know why you're doing this. There? Like, you're doing a lot right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm just trying to download things. <laughs> Oliver says that person's going to bankrupt the tooth fairy, which is... <laughs> True. I well, like they didn't because they passed. Capitalistic mind, you know, right there, and just get on top of it. Something to use all those teeth for. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I downloaded my images, um, and so then I just kind of airdrop them Wait, over Did you draw this my... background? I did draw this it's background. So cute. I like to draw cute things. Yeah. Um, this is one of them. So today we're going to do cute Halloween. So let's pop on over to the iPad and I'll show you exactly where I'm at. All oh, right, great. Let me move. I probably should not close that. All right. Well, so here, here we go. Guys. Do, you, do you feel like when you're generally working with an illustration, you're normally hopping onto the iPad? Yes, I always work with the iPad. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to figure out which way to go. Okay. I always work with. The iPad and Adobe Fresco is my favorite. Mm -hmm. Okay. Favorite of all time. And do you use Kyle T. Webster's brushes or do you use the ones that are kind of already baked into Fresco? I use Kyle T. Webster. I use other ones. I use the ones that are built in. I kind of pop all over. What I lo love about Adobe Fresco is that you can use vector. Yeah, and yeah. so I love to use vector and add raster brushes because I feel like it gives me that cutout texture. Actually, the... The one you saw on my desktop, that's mm -hmm. like vector. That was with vector? Texture. Wow. Okay. And I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's necessary, but I just like it. You right. Know what yeah, I mean? no, I love the texture. The so texture. That's how I kind of, that's how I go. So if you see here, I already have all these images on my screen, the ones that I uploaded, um, downloaded, and transferred over. But all you have to do to import images is go to photos, and then you'll see all your photos. And then you can import the one. So you see I have this uh, spider one. So that's just how I brought all these images in. I'm not going to go through my whole photo roll right now live. So yeah, that'd be interesting. Uh, let's just, <laughs> these are the images, okay, that we're using. Um, and they're a lot like the ones that you saw earlier. Mm -hmm. So That this, eye looks very different from the one that we made, though. That I know. one's got a very illustrative feel to it. This one is graphic. You know how yeah. the other one, it was... Um, photo or art, mm -hmm. this one was with the graphic setting in Firefly. And that's always so. really fun to play around with, like to see how the system is going to reevaluate re the same it. thing. Yeah, Yeah. so this uh, canvas, I'm going to do a spider. So I'm working in, just so you guys know, 1080 by 1920. I'm picturing, because we're going to animate it over in Adobe Express, I'm picturing a little real animation, oh, right? Nice. So I was yeah. like, okay, let's do this size. Um, and the background, it actually doesn't matter because I'm going to animate it and I'm going to select my background over in Adobe Express. But I just want a background because it's kind of disorienting to draw without a background. Um, so I'm going to come over here. Thank you for all the eyes in chat. Appreciate that, you guys. Yes. Nice and... Um, solidarity. Solidarity. Maybe we should put some teeth. No teeth. No <laughs> one put any teeth in the chat. I don't want to see any teeth. <laughs> <laughs> we, I've seen enough for today. So I have all my images actually in this. They appear as like nothing over here on the side because mm -hmm. I have them all outside of the canvas bounds. So I just kind of have them hovering around my canvas. So they're not appearing here in the layer, but they are all there. And I group them together so that I can easily toggle it on and off. And I also like to have this like kind of all the way at the bottom so I don't accidentally... It's, it's easy to lose track of. Is that something you do with normally all your products? You like to kind of surround the artboard with, or the canvas with your different pieces of inspiration? I do because I feel like sometimes you're drawing something and you kind of go off your brain and then you're like, wait, it, what? something's not working. And then yeah. you look at your reference and you're like, oh, it's because it needs to be bigger right. or it's too little or whatever. Um, it's o only a size issue. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, everything else. <laughs> I'm, too little I'm a too perfect big. hand, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> yeah, hands, it's like the entire... Uh, Canvas is filled with photos of hands when right. I have to draw a hand. Uh, but anyway, that's what I like to do. And so we're going to do a spider kind of coming down. And this is just a fun illustration. So I'm not getting too technical here. But I hold down the pencil. And then I get like kind of the straight line. And it's so cool that those um, those textures, those rough edges are being there and they're scalable and you're being able to mess with them. I love the texture. Awesome. It's my favorite thing. If it was just like 
uh, strokes, I would not be having as fu as much fun. I'm also interested to see, like, as you work through this, um, I'm somebody who I, I feel like I get too close whenever I'm drawing something, and you're like already this. kind of, like, yeah, that yeah, and yeah, also, yeah. like, pinching in. Yeah. Um, and it's already interesting to see you're already kind of working with a full canvas in view, which is... I don't know if necessary. that's just because we're live or if that's natural to oh, me, okay. but got it, got it. I feel like I do tend to um, scale in, but I also... You know, this is kind of a, a chill drawing. I'm not trying to get too uh, realistic or anything. So I just want to make sure that it looks like a funny little spider. A cute little Charlotte. Yeah. And actually, something that I like to do sometimes is I'll just draw, like, I'm going to do it on a different layer. So this is, like, our body. This is kind of a sketch. And then we'll go in and do some, some final line art. But we have eight legs on a spider. I had to Google this yesterday. I was like, do they always have eight legs? And they're arachnids, right? Yeah, it's so said they that they eat. almost always do. And I was like, wow, that's shocking to me a little bit. It's like, gross, man. Like, I thought that, but, but then beautiful. I was like, surely there's some spiders that have more. No, because I guess there's... Oh, yeah, no, I don't want any more than eight. No. I don't know. Well, Firefly was giving me some crazy spiders, so I had yeah. to double check. But cool, I am um, going to just do kind of the left side. But see, here's where I need a photo, because I'm just like, I, they can't all be shaped like little... The they have more things. shapes than that, you know? Yeah, I get that. So also, I have to be like, hello okay. to AA Creativo over on YouTube. Welcome to the stream. Welcome. Um, also seeing lots of uh, eye drop conversation over in uh, the Behance chat as well. If you guys have any questions or suggestions while we're in chat. Ooh, I love the squiggle. That's nice. Um, yeah. That's a cool approach. And then I'm just going to just uh, select it, hit duplicate layer. I'm going to go over here to my selection tool mirror it nice boom because i do like some symmetry Symmetry's i great. feel like uh that bottom circle is like a little off so it's not working great but i'm just going to edit that and so i just like to draw kind of like my sketch and then i'll go in and refine it and add any more details right so i'm just gonna select all of these i'm gonna merge them i know daring and then uh turn up turn down the layer opacity okay and then I'm just going to do kind of my final drawing. And for the sake of time, I'm going to just, I'm going to commit. I love that. In reality, I'd probably be drawing quite a few versions of this spider. But that's not the point today, you know? Now, with your brush settings, do you have like smoothing on or anything? Or is it just kind of I don't of even think I have that, that much on? smoothing on. I don't, I don't think I have it on at all. Oh. Right? If it's just like that. Or that's yeah. pain inside. Ooh. Wait. I thought that was smoothing. This is smoothing. There you go. I have it on at 69. Okay, nice. You know? And then, yeah, I'm just going to draw these, and we'll call it a spider. And I kind of, what's your take on, um, f I like to draw the fill in. I don't oh, just, like, yes, paint I bucket like it. it. No, it, it has, like, because oh, those to. little um, imperfections. imperfections make it feel so much more natural and not like a computer generated thing. Yeah, so we have to witness this of me just drawing it in as fast as I can. And I'm going to add a little bit of uh, different weight to these lines so they look a little bit more leggy because I was looking here at the spider and they're, they kind of like got bubble pom -poms. up a little bit at, at the end. But uh, yeah, I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to add some details, which is my favorite part because right now it seems it's kind of boring. It's kind of a boring spider, but I don't think so. We're I mean, I already like it. Character. It kind of feels like a uh, what is that ricochet blot? What is it called? You oh, know what I, I'm I, about? I know blot? what you're talking about, but I cannot say that word. Yeah, I don't know it kind of it's giving me those vibes as well. Yes, it has like the symmetry, like an ink blot. Yes, and um, so I like just spooky. Love to use clipping masks. Oh yeah, I'm favorite. A, I'm always in clipping masks. Always in clipping masks, and then I have this little um. This is the color palette I use for like all my drawings, and so it's already in here because of libraries, which yes, is amazing. With your draws in Spanish. Yeah, um, I use it for mm -hmm. all that, and also for all my drawings. So now I'm gonna draw some like um, threatening. 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 Uh, some friendly threatening. Stripes. Stripes. And I'm gonna turn off the sketch that I have. Okay, there we go. It's a little cleaner now, and oh, I yeah. need eyeballs too. Okay, I'm gonna do some eyeballs on a different clipping mask. Clever says, to make more spidery and less beetly, legs come from the front only where the two segments meet. How long I have to process this? To make more spidery and less beetly, legs come from front only where the two segments meet. So like right here? Oh yeah, I guess so. Okay. But it's also your interpretation. It's my so interpretation, it so it could be anything, anything but I like- <laughs> Spider bee, yeah. says Wade. 
<laughs> I'm like, wait, I don't understand. Uh, okay, and then I'm going to add just some eyeballs. Or Schach test. I still can't say it. Both Wade and George put it in the in the chat. It's R O R S C H A C H. Warshash. It's like Worcester. Yeah, that's a hard one. I'm not gonna even <laughs> pretend that I can, Ooh, little can't say it. Beady little eyes. Okay, so I found out yesterday that they all have like eight eyes. Yeah. But I can't fit that many in this drawing. So it's, it's okay. We're it's just interpretation. Gonna, yeah. And this is all within the I'm clipping free. mask, so it all won't ever go outside mask. of what you've already created underneath there. Yeah, and so now I'm gonna add some details to the legs. Um, I'm sorry for um, any, what's it called? Warshack. What are the scientists that study um, Spiders? Bugs? Oh. And, oh, oh. And it's something with an E, I know Oh, I that. thought it was gonna be something with arachnid, like a, let's see. There's like a own. bug specialist. Let's see what what there's, is there's, a bug sorry, specialist. Sorry, I apologize to them called. because you'll probably be like that's entomologist. Not. There you go, entomologist. An entomologist. They know that this is not accurate, but I know that I'm having a lot of fun. Adobe Live is going to be totally trolled by a bunch of bug scientists that are coming like, no, in. They're not even not. artists; they're just upset. It's <laughs> so I'm adding just some little details. Okay, that Thank feels you, Carol and Wade. that feels fine. And now I'm gonna add. A little bit more of a web to just insinuate that it's a spider because it mm -hmm, does. I can mm -hmm. see the bee affiliation here. Also, thank you to John and Julie. Yes. So I'm gonna just add this little web. I think I'm gonna make it longer. I want to uh, because I'm gonna animate it. I kind of want to give myself some space uh, for the animation. Christopher It'll says cute later. spider. So you're you're definitely um, nail on the cute side. And good. Definitely, I don't want to smash it. So yeah, no. If good. I saw this spider, this spider like can talk. Is kind of the vibe I'm going Do you remember for. Um, James Great. and the Giant Peach? Yeah. Did you ever watch it? Yes. I, I tried to rewatch it last year. Didn't hit anymore? It's pretty, but it doesn't hold up from a story perspective. But watch it for inspiration. It's wow. very pretty. It's a musical, but you don't remember it as a musical because the music is so bad. Okay. This is Ryan's opinion, not Adobe opinion. Controversy. Opinions. Yeah. Yeah, his opinions are his own. My opinions are my own. <laughs> okay, so sometimes my I feel like my lines aren't dark enough, but I don't want to manually um, go over them. Mm -hmm. So I just duplicate. I could probably, oh, cool. it's, it's probably like a brush setting, I just haven't gone around to it kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. And so you're going to do that for everything or just the web? Just the web, just okay. the web. And now, just to be tidy, I'm going to select everything about the spider and the web and put it in a folder, in a group. And now it's all by itself. And because I know that I want to animate this la later and I want to bring it into Adobe Express, Adobe Express will grab this entire file essentially. Okay. And so I already want to make it transparent. Uh, okay. Just for Adobe Express, and you'll see how this makes sense later. If you wanted to export it, you could just turn that on and export it like this. But right. I want kind of this object, like I want this entire thing to be transparent so I can animate it. Great. And it doesn't like animate with a background, which would be odd. Yeah, because then it would move the, the, background the, the tan along. and stuff. And nothing would make now. sense. So I also here, want to put this like above a, a person's face. Yeah, you so you would want right to be right able to animate that. <laughs> so good call. Now, this is the one we just made. I'm going to show you the one I had pre-made just so you can see it. I added a little bit of, um, oh, I guess, the sheen. texture sheen. So it does look like, like a beetle, I guess, but I'm still happy with it. I think, hmm. I like both. They have different vibes, though. Yeah. They're cousins. Oh, because this one I added, I added all the eyeballs, and, and I made the, the eyeballs out. lime Teeny green. Teeny tiny. Yeah. Teeny, tiny, so lime green. I just wanted to show you, but it was the same process. It just took a little bit more time with it. Carol says, looks like cute socks, which, yeah, that's Yes, great. yes, yes, yes. Okay, so now, because I want to animate in Adobe Express, I'm, I could just draw the other elements right in this same okay. fresco f file, let's say, but I want them all to be separate, right? Right. And I don't want to have to export and then re-import and you know, I just want it to all work without me having to move things around. Right. And so to work with the cloud, I'm going to leave this. I'm going to be like, okay, this is good. I'm going to get out of here. Welcome to Muhammad. Good to have you here. And what I do is I just duplicate. The whole file. The whole file. Because okay. I basically want everything except what I just drew. Yes. And then I can just, like, delete this. And you're just getting rid of I'm just the getting excess. rid of. I'm basically starting like a fresh canvas, but okay. I already have the images loaded. I have yeah, a file yeah, yeah. size. It's just, it's kind of like using it as a template. And so then I would draw the the next thing, which I'm going to say is the skull? skull. Let's do skull time. Let's go, let's go skull. So I'm going to, I'm going to move this over here. So it's a little, a little bit closer to a little your work closer space. to me. I'm going to hide the eyeball. One of these is the eyeball. There we go. 
I had thought of doing like oozing apples, but that didn't end up happening. Yeah. You know, you can change your mind while you're working. Yeah, that's the beauty of it. So I'm going to do a little skull and having the reference is great for this because what I think a skull looks like in my mind mm -hmm. is is not like this. Like you know, I, like over, skull. I oversimplify it. It's yeah. like I'm not familiar with the skull. So I'm going to, hmm, did your, my college had a cadaver drawing class. Well, I had life drawing and we had, we didn't do cadavers, but we got like skeletons that were you know like the science like real one and we had skeletons to, no not real i don't think they were oh. ever humans so did you did, was this yours for cadaver did they have real cadavers yeah they had cadaver no, it was like with the no medical thanks. school it was uh, like here's no some fresh <laughs> no i didn't go to hey, i didn't I'm go to med school I'm not, there for I'm not opining i'm just stating the facts i couldn't take it because it uh it uh, interrupted with another class I, that was a requirement. But my your friends other cadaver took it. class. Your, my friends took your it. serial killer class. Yeah. <laughs> well, I originally wanted to be a medical illustrator. Oh, okay. And so I took a lot of science classes. Yeah. And so you're a smart cookie. They inter they interrupted with the art cadaver class, which, yeah, which is weird which because a bummer, it's a, you would think you think that would be like a requirement. Yeah, well, I was kind of doing my own thing there with the medical yeah. illustration thing. Um, hello to Alejandro and to Katarina. Good to have you guys here. We are working through some illustrations with Fabiola. She had generated some imagery with Firefly at the beginning of the show, mm -hmm. and now we're using it as a source of inspiration. She's putting her own illustrations on it. And in just a little bit, we're going to be going into Express, and we're going to be adding some nice animations to these cool things that they have. Yes. Wade well, says, unlife drawing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's it. I think it helped people because I would probably know how to draw like a lot more anatomy. Yeah. Uh, Marshall wants to know if you ever use the reference and trace over it. I have. I have. I've definitely done that in the past when it's like uh, a dog or something kind of more complicated. Right. But I think sometimes that makes me be too realistic, oh, I and get then that. you lose like the style that you want. You yeah. know, because then you're just like, yeah. So there's like a happy medium there that you have to find. And some objects, I think, work better than others. Like, it probably would have worked great if I did it with a spider, because the spider yeah. was already a bit stylized. Yeah. But it wouldn't have been as good, I think, with, uh, with like, the skull maybe be a little too realistic. Did you know Adobe Live Streamer uh, Jack Watson used to be a medical illustrator? <gasps> I didn't know that. You guys I should vibe over that. I am so excited about that, <laughs> because when I wanted to pursue that, I emailed a bunch of people, mm -hmm. and they were like, don't do it. A bunch of people who graduated with it. Oh, yeah. They were like... Don't oh, that's do such a it. Bummer. So I didn't end up doing it. I just ended up going a whole different direction. But it's always so exciting when I see people that were into it. I mean, Ew, she said, oh, "I said, Ew, that's." Uh, <laughs> but she said, "But she said that she drew cadavers and in surgery, and I just don't have the stomach for that." <gasps> that's amazing. That's very cool. Not for me, but I'm glad. I don't mean to yuck your yum. Uh, and it was that. That's very admirable of you. It's cool. I mean, I think when you like. Okay, let's not say like, but when you don't mind morbid stuff, yeah, it's fun. It's like a it yeah, cute teeth on life drawing. Exactly what Little somebody else said. Boop, boop, boop. Yeah, and we're not gonna do four rows of teeth for your sake. Thank you. Uh, and a then little I'm respect on. around here. And I'm gonna draw you <laughs> for sure. And I like to. My favorite thing to do is like when I get into line work and it's a mixture of like fill mm -hmm. and also empty kind of lines, yeah. I don't know, you know, like this. Oh wait, I can't, because that's a clipping mask. But if I did this, like, I'm like, oh yeah, that feels good when I have a mix of all of it. Got it. But uh, yeah, I'm just gonna add some little details here. Again, it's a bit friendly, so, you know, I'm not gonna go crazy. Also, we're on a live stream. I don't wanna keep you here all day, but I'm just showing you kind of my process. And I don't know if you noticed, but the this time the base of the skull, let's say, it's it's vector. Oh, and cool. you can see here, uh, I have the opacity down right now, but you can see here, it's actually, yeah, it's all vector. And then. And it has that um, little icon next to it to let you know so that like, it's vector. Yeah. And so now I can just like paint bucket the different colors that I want, which I'm not even sure what color I want. I kind of want like a neon. That's kind of fun. Oh, I love the neon. Yeah. I love, I like um, bright greens and purples. It's fun. And like the neon that's like um, almost like a black light neon for Halloween. Yes. I think those are really cool. So now I'm using this noise control brush. I think it's in the airbrush settings, airbrush folder of the brushes. Okay. Uh, and I'm using it on a clipping mask on the vector to kind of create this. Uh, but yeah. this is underneath your line work. This is underneath my line work. Yeah, that's, how, that's how I like it. Cool. But you know, you can do it however you want on your drawing. 
Um, and then in the chat, Carol saying that she was uh, suggested to be a medical illustrator as well, but she went into the hospital. She first saw a grasshopper's illustra illustration and she liked it, but then the cleft palate, and she's like, nope, not no. for me. <laughs> the reason I didn't end up doing it is because they were like, oh, you just end up using 3D modeling. And yes. I was like, oh, that's not that fun. Like, the friend that I know uh, has been doing uh, illustration with 3D modeling, but she's getting real freaky with it. Like, yeah. It's, it's, kind of uh, conceptual at the same time as it is medical, which is strange since it's medical, but like yeah. you have some liberty in it, but it's all 3D. Yeah, it was 3D, and then they also told me like, oh, you, you rarely have like a full-time job, and that's what really put me off. I was mm -hmm. like, because you usually get hired by, um, like for a lawsuit or by a hospital, like on a kind of freelance basis. Yeah. So I was like, oh, okay, I'm not so sure about that, but hey, now I'm a freelancer anyway. Yeah, I was so gonna say, now, now it's in the same spot. Who would have known? It's, it's all the same, but. Now I just draw uh, to fun things and not just cadavers and stuff. <laughs> and then here we are with the skull. With so the skull. It's, all it's all comes full comes circle, back. baby. Oh, sorry, I hit the microphone. I'm sorry if you guys heard that. Um, okay, so I'm gonna do this and then I'm gonna animate it. So I'm thinking about it on a transparent background and I wanna give it like a pink glow. So I'm just going to add a little bit of glow. And I think after this, I'm just gonna show you kind of the final ones that I created so we can move into um, some of the other fun stuff that I have in store. Okay, here we go. There we go. So if you could imagine this. Ooh, the glow is nice. If you can imagine this, yeah. I love, I just love adding a little texture with, with the line work, with the flat, just kind of contrast of things. Okay, I feel like it needs eyeballs. Yeah, that's my error. That's what's missing in my heart. In your skull. Some eyeballs. I want like creepy. Little yellow eyeballs or white eyeballs? Yes, or yellow. I don't know yet. You know, everything's everything's editable. He has some visine. It's fine. He's got good, nice white there. eyes. Oh yeah, yeah. Ooh. That's what I needed. Let's try the yellow. So I like to do it with a clipping mask because, like, when there, you use a textured brush, then mm -hmm. you need to use clipping mask to. So uh, that's hold it down. Wrong. Yeah, that's the wrong. Yeah, yellow works. But you good just did too. a full on fill for that, so that way you didn't have to color it in for the clipping mask. So that's kind of a cool. Yeah, way to yeah. Nice if, if you have like some texture, mm -hmm. I tend to instead of having to redraw it essentially, uh, I use a clipping, a vector clipping mask to just be able to switch it out, and then it kind of looks clean. Yeah, because you already did the work of the texture yeah. with the regular brush. Yeah. So the same thing could happen here with this uh, shading, like. I had to un undo the clipping mask, so it looks everything looks broken. But then if I clip it blue, merge it down, and clip it, then we have blue shading. But I want to go back to the green shading. Yeah, I like the green. The green is, is cool. Yeah. Okay. Now, when you're normally kind of playing around with colors, is you mostly do it by eyeball, or do you? I know you have your palette. That I you have, have a palette, so that kind of keeps me in a realm of joy because mm -hmm. I feel like I already pre-vetted those colors. Right. Like, I know all those colors. I love them. <laughs> They're, they, they've been, yeah. They've been vetted by myself. But uh, sometimes I like to use Adobe palettes to go play with new colors and try and find a new thing. OK. Um, but yeah, I tend to stick to the same palette. And I want my colors to kind of clash, as you can see. Like, this but is clash, not subtle. Clash, but work together. Work together. Clashing. There's still like contrast and stuff. But uh, I want it to be colorful essentially cool. so that's so we're about halfway through yeah um, and so far we have generated some images and we've also illustrated um, a cute little spider and a cute little uh, skull, skull as well um, did you want to illustrate um, one more thing before we hop into Express I'm wondering we might just let's just hop right into um, Photoshop and Express cool. because I'm gonna show you the ones that I've already made because this next one was kind of a little bit more complicated. Oh, so, those eyeballs are great. Yeah, so I made this. I'm just going to show it to you. So when you see it in the next phase, you're not like, where did that come from? But right. I use the exact same technique. Uh, maybe maybe it won't open. Okay, I did a lot of things open. to this document, so I think it might it might be a big one. Uh, let's see. It kind of gives me Looney Tune vibes when they like go into the dark and all the eyes pop open. Yeah. And they're like, oh, I'm that's what alone. I wanted. That's what I wanted. So <laughs> let me uh, open one of these smaller ones. So basically, instead of working in the Fine. in the 19 by 20, I knew that I wanted to be able to animate the eyeballs individually because right. I want them to move independently of each other. So I just kind of drew these. They're pretty simple eyeballs. It's it's vector uh, base with some texture on top. This is already flattened. But um, yeah, it's the same process as the other ones because I wanted them to all be in the same world. And I created five of them. So you see them here, five different 
styles of those eyeballs. And here's actually the skull I drew previously, which has a little bit more detail. Ooh, okay. Um, so you can get a sense of- He looks of, sadder. His eyes are a little bit like- He's oh. not as excited. The eyeballs should be bigger, I feel. But, you know. Bobbing for eyeballs? Is spooky. Gross. Yeah. Also, something that never, like, there were a few things that didn't make it past COVID, and bobbing for apples, I think, is one of those things, because we were Ooh, like, yeah, that's just a bad like, idea. Yeah, that's not a great idea. <laughs> not great. So, I'm going to pop on over. Well, before we go, I just want to okay. remind you, if you're working in Adobe Fresco, just make sure everything has these check marks. You see these little green check marks, and then you'll know that it's been... Uh, synced into the cloud, to your creative cloud. So now when I move over to Adobe Express, all these files, because they're basically PSD files, will also show up in Adobe Express. You don't have to do anything special. You Nothing. just save them and It just and looks just essentially like this. I just select them, and then it just speeds everything up, and you don't have to airdrop or, I don't know, do the million other, email yourself files or anything crazy like that. I had a weird system for that for a while. Yeah. <laughs> and here, actually, you'll see, um, we're going to, if we get to it, we're going to make some textures in Photoshop. But um, let's, let's, get, let's get into Express already. Let's go back to my desktop, please. Please. Wait, my computer's sleepy. Wake up the computer. Okay. And we're back. And we're back in Adobe Express. Okay, full screen. Okay, let's get to work. So the beauty of this is that everything is kind of already in there, but let me show you how to get started. So we're not starting from scratch because we already have files in the Creative Cloud. So I wanna start with an Instagram Reel. If you missed it, in the beginning of the stream, I mentioned that I am creating some illustrations that I'm gonna animate for an Instagram Reel. That's just what I thought would be a fun video. Okay. Um, and if you go, it's gonna start you off in templates, but Wait, is this Instagram real size? It looks like the wrong size. Maybe I clicked. It's so funny how they're all so slightly different. Yeah, and here and we go. It really Create from scratch. Off. All right, I think that's different. But good on you for catching that. Yeah, because I want to be able to export it and it look cute and I don't want it to be cut off. So if you go over here to your stuff, look at this, everyone. Are you seeing this? That These was are instantaneous. All... So this is the one that uh, I drew. A... No, actually, that's not the one I drew a second ago, but it's probably just not. No, it's in there. Oh, this is the one I drew, but I ended up leaving it on the more finished um, layer group. There he is. So I'm just going to, let me just replay that. You just select it, and it pops into your canvas. In chat, can we see some names for the spider, please? Yes. We would love some names. Yes. And here we go. I just kind of uh, dragged up, scaled up the image, and because it's going to animate, here, I'm gonna just show you my, my thinking. So this is what happens if you just put it right up on the border. Uh, but then if you select this basically layer now that's a PSD file and go into animations, this is, I just love this entire panel, but I'm just gonna stick to animation right now before I get too excited. <laughs> We're gonna Webster go to animation, Boris. looping, Perfect. and there's this amazing yo-yo effect. Oh, that's great. It's really cute, right? But like it's getting cut off. Yeah, it's, it's showing some of the ending It's showing ending part. the ending. So I'm just going to move it up. And then we can also play with the intensity. So and what's now, that going to do? What's the intensity going to switch So up? intensity is going to, I think, make it uh, a little bit less dramatic. Oh, cool. OK. So now it's like a little, a little more subtle. And the speed will slow it down. So maybe it's not so fast. Yeah. And then I can just drag this back down. Maybe I want it to be a little further down. And we could click play. Bada bing, bada boom. So cute. All right, so which do you like most? Do you like Webster, Boris, Gertrude, Charlotte, Stu, or Brenda? Oh, Boris is kind of nice. Boris. This is Boris. <laughs> I think it sounds like, um, yeah, British. <laughs> but, but, oh, oh, it's, 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 it's a British, British spider. Right. It's a British spider. <laughs> Making you do a British accent online. Oh, I'm so bad at accents. <laughs> I My friends make fun of me all the time for it. <laughs> so. Because also this file is transparent, uh -huh. I can change the background color of this, and now we can put the spider on <gasps> any color. So I'm gonna do. We have a little know. rave I'm spider kind of right now pink. as we're flipping through the colors. I'm kind of into pink again. Like pink. It's a hallo It's a friendly Halloween theme. Yeah. It's a child-approved Halloween theme. Child-approved. Okay, so yeah, <laughs> child-friendly, child-friendly. Clever said threadador, which is funny. <laughs> That's like cute. Like Theodore, but a thread of a of a of a web of a web. That's so cute. 
All right, and now I'm also gonna go ahead and add some more scenes. So if you add a scene, it basically is like another uh, group of these. Instead of just bringing um, more files onto this and mm -hmm. animating them individually, I can hit add scene and it's just like a brand, I can choose a brand new background color. Oh, great. Uh, so you don't kind of affect the previous set of animations. And that can be really helpful when you're making a reel because then you could add additional information that kind of feels like the next reel that you would tap yeah, through. Yeah, 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 exactly. That's so really that's what I'm kind of into. So I'm gonna add the skull that I did earlier and I have to change the background because now you can't see it. But oh. I, what I also like about this is that I made the, the skull kind of like just a general size, like kind of this big. But mm -hmm. once I'm in Adobe Express, I can really be like, oh, maybe it should be bigger or not. and. And because it's a linked file, it doesn't like get too bad, you know? It's not yeah. like you're, it's not as destructive. I mean, you still can't blow it up huge, but it looks better. But yeah, but it's enough. Also, Sean Cozell just joined the chat. Welcome to the chat, sir. Welcome. Um, you'll be happy to know we were playing around in Firefly a little bit earlier, but then uh, after making some illustrations in Fresco, we just seamlessly jumped over to Express, and now we are animating the illustrations that Fabiola just made. Yeah, so now I'm gonna just hit animation again, go into looping, and I think for this one, I, I was thinking flicker, let's see. Because then it seems like it's like flickering in and out of this background. Let's play it through. Not intense oh, enough. Ooh. Not intense enough. Oh, that's spooky, more intense though. and a little more speed. Maybe let's let's try it. Add more speed. Oh that's yeah, that's fun. cool. That's, that's cool. cool. So yeah, these effects. There's a ton of different effects. I want to show you them real quick. So there's Bob. Oh Ooh, okay. Spooky Halloween. I kind of into it. I'm kind of into it. Uh, breathe. It's like not the vibe for this. Guy. No, not not him. It feels too much Scooby Doo. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Flicker. I liked because it's like he's. He's gonna get you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jitters, all right. But yeah, I'm just, you can apply these to any one of your uh, linked assets or elements or anything that you bring in into here. And I these just. These all chose, have variables, right? Yeah. Like and you could mess with how you intense mess they it for are. All, for all of them. So uh, yeah, you can, it's very customizable and it's cool because if you do your own illustrations, you can add movement to your illustrations without having to open. After Effects, which can be a bit overwhelming for people. So this is a little bit of like a shortcut for things that if it's just for social media, it's not right. for a big, you know, I don't know, a crazy huge project or something. If, if you have a big crazy project and you're too scared to go into After Effects though, um, hit me up. Yeah. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely hit him up. Uh, so here we go, I'm gonna do Flickr. Or sometimes if it's just like something I'm trying to play with <coughs> to see if it would even work to begin with, like does my idea even work before I bring it into After Effects? This is a quick way to kind of test it. Right. Um, and you can also, I've been doing the looping animations, which means the animations loop, but you could also do in and out animations. So, and these are sometimes, yeah, they're a bit different. So there's like a pop in, let's try it. Let's add Flickr. So now we have oh, so pop, you can have in, it pop in, and pop then in, have and then flicker, flicker secondary. And then we can do for out, what do we do? Shrink maybe? Ooh, yeah, that's kind of cool. Let's do shrink. Or wait, there's this one that's tumble. Tumble? Oh, that's oh, cool. Oh, later, okay. girly. So, and you can even <laughs> pick the direction and the rotation. That's kind of neat. So let's move the playhead to the beginning and play this through. Ooh. Oh, okay, flick, okay, flicker, okay. Flick. flicker, flicker. Bye. Bye. So it's really customizable and yeah, it's fun. So I'm gonna, wait, I didn't mean to delete that. Yeah, there we go. I'm gonna leave it as is. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you one more scene that you can add so you can see all the variety. So like I said, I drew all these eyeballs individually, kind of individual fresco late files so that I could bring them in here and animate them individually so that if I had drawn it all together, then the whole file would move together and it would kind of not be the vibe. Also, I actually forgot to address one of the comments I saw on here that was asking about a smart object from Marsha. And actually, if you take these objects and you save them in your library, it's like outside of even a file, like if you just have a library and you save it as a smart object in your library, you can also bring them into Adobe Express to animate them into your yeah. project. Yeah, so there's a lot of different ways to like make the workflow work for you. Um, but yeah, I kind of like being able to just do the drawing and then do the animating separate and just like, okay, now actually I want this eye to be a little bit rotated. I don't 
I don't have to go back to fresco and rotate the eyeball and right. put it back in here, which can be a pain, you know? But if you do need to make a change, you can actually see that, for example, this eyeball, it says linked asset. Okay. So you can open it in Photoshop. So I can and it has that button right there. You don't even have to find it on your own don't system. Don't have to do anything crazy. So I'm going to let this open up. And now I could change something. Right now this is flattened, I think. This is just a pixel layer. But uh, I have like other layers in the background and stuff. So yeah, you can just edit something and it would update. Let's see, let's, uh, let's do something dramatic. Do something dramatic. Something that I wouldn't actually do. I'm gonna do a create clipping mask here and I'm just gonna make it, just to show you how it's worked, I'm gonna make this whole thing pink. Ah! Very dramatic, I'm gonna oh, hit no. save. Okay. And we should get a prompt in here. Your linked oh, assets have update. changed. Update. Boom. Bada bing, bada boom. Not my, no not my favorite choice. Yeah, it's an interesting il illustration choice. Yeah, but, but you know, no. I just wanted to show you how it works. <laughs> so I'm gonna go back, save it. Maybe I made a big mistake. Okay. Okay, update. Can relate. We're back. Everything's <laughs> fine. And uh, how I'm gonna animate this is in this, the same way. I'm just gonna go to animation, looping, and I'm gonna choose Bob for these. Oh, that's a good choice. Oh yeah, that's so good. I'm gonna do Bob for all of them. So I'm gonna be quick here. So now are these you. all gonna happen in the same time? Um, they are gonna happen in the same time, but we can edit it. Oh really, okay, yes. cool. So we can change kind of the speed of them all. So look, right now this is the default Bob animation applied to every single eyeball. Womp, womp. Whoa, this one, oh, you got a this flicker one, on that one, on one accident. Sometimes it, it's not listening to me. Okay, there we go. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes if you don't play it through in the beginning, you'll uh, see. See, these are on breathe for some reason. Ooh. So I just, you know, they, they, watch They're it back. eyeballs with uh, minds of their own. Yeah, you have to watch it back sometimes and make sure. I was going to spookiness. Fast. Okay, let's see. Play. Right, let's check this out. There, there so, they go. But now they're moving in sync. Yeah. Like, like bye, bye, seals bye. or something. Like animals, like a pack of animals, look. Like they're swimming, uh, yeah. what's it called? Synchronized swimmers. Synchronized swimmers. So I don't want that. So I'm gonna click on this one, go to animation. Who that extracurricular? Yeah. Mm -mm. <laughs> and I'm gonna make this one faster. Wait, it should be slower because it's a bigger eyeball. Yeah, yes, there that we tracks. go. That makes sense. And then I'm gonna go, maybe the intensity of it. All right, and then I'm gonna do the same thing for this one. And I could actually just like copy, just like 34, 14, and then make this one also 34, 14. Clever says, a school of eyeballs? A school of eyeballs. <laughs> you right. can miss me with that. I don't want to see that. <laughs> so you can see now Whoa! they're starting to move differently. Okay, that and feels maybe, way more natural. Maybe I'll move this one down a bit. Oops, sorry, when I when I hit play, it goes to the beginning. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There we go, but this, this one I think should move faster. I'm gonna go to animation. Pump up the speed. Pump up the jam. And make the intensity is like how far up and down it's going. I don't want the that to change too much. Right. Okay, so there we go. Yes, I'm into this, I'm into this. But something that's messing with me is that I feel like the they should be like in the wave. Like they mm -hmm. sh there should be like water in front of it, right? Okay, yeah, so, I'm sure, I'm here for it. But I don't want to go draw that element. No, we don't got time for that. We only have like six minutes left. I don't want to go draw that. So I'm just going to go over to elements, shapes, and add this rectangle. Now it's not a the rectangle. best choice. I couldn't find a wave. Okay. So I'm going to go with a rectangle okay. and I'm just going to kind of clip it a little bit. How like would you do this. that? I just placed it here on top. So you see this layer is all the way on top of this eyeball. Okay. I'm going to change the fill to this green and I'm going to copy this. I'm just going to press Option and just drag this. Oh, so your your keyboard shortcuts also still work while still you're in work. Express. Still Yeah, which is great because then you're working faster without even realizing. So now, if you look at this, it kind of simulates that there's nice. kind of that surface water. Ideally, this would also be waving. Uh huh. Feel like if you want to get it to look really, really, really uh, true to life, you might have to open up After Effects. But I'm just showing you how you can make this happen in here. And one more thing I wanna show you, I feel like specifically this uh, vignette needs like ooey gooey bubbles, like, okay. in, like the stew, you know, the stew of eyeballs. So I'm gonna open up, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be fast. Gooey. 
I'm gonna open up this here. Start Wait. the timer. Will this will this open? Yes. Okay. So this is kind of the drawing that I did mm -hmm. before I broke them all apart. And all I'm gonna do is go to the rectangle marquee tool. I'm gonna hit Command A to select the entire area. I'm gonna hit Generative Fill, and I'm gonna say Bubbly Texture Background Green and Slimy. Let's see. Okay, come on, come on, come on. Please give us a cool texture because otherwise I used to have to like search the internet to try and find like right. a copyright free texture and it would take forever. Oh, look at these. These are fun. And these are so cool. Okay. Ooh, this one I feel like ooh. could be in there. Feels very scientific. Yeah, also this one's, scientific. but like, like, ooh, like oozy. Oozy, yeah. So Slime I'm going to, yeah. So I'm going <laughs> to go with this texture. Mostly for the sake of time here, I don't want to keep us too long. And I'm gonna just command, command shift S to save it as a new file, because I want to keep the original of this file. But I'm gonna say slime texture one, and I'm saving it to my Creative Cloud. I'm not saving it to my computer, because if you save it to your Creative Cloud, then you'll see it pop up here in your stuff. Your stuff. Right Look at that instantaneously. There, right there. So I'm gonna just expand it. Okay, now it's covering everything. Not yeah. ideal. But what we have all, all these work? all of these uh, selections over here. So I'm gonna reduce the opacity. That's smart. Maybe play with some of these settings. So screen doesn't work great. Multiply kind of works good, but I feel like I lost it a little bit. It's also cool that it shows you like a um, little representation of the blend mode because when I'm like yeah. working in Photoshop, like I'll just like scroll them down and mm -hmm. be like, we'll see how this works. But it's cool that they have that hot air balloon. Exactly. I really like it. And then I feel like it needs movement. So I'm going to, I have this texture selection. I'm going to go to animation, looping, and I'm going to say Bob. But this is too Ooh. extreme. This is too extreme. So let's lower the intensity. Lower the intensity, lower, I think the intensity needs to go down to like two. And this, I magically kind of think it's seven. That's nuts. And look at that. Now we that have so like a fun texture on top of this. Um, and it adds a little bit of depth to this, don't you think? Like, yeah. No, definitely. And I didn't I have to sense. like sit there and draw a bunch of bubbles. Right. I feel like if I wanted to take this to another level, I could draw some more of the stewy elements, mm -hmm. but I would just animate them in the exact same way. Yeah, no, it's a um, nice scalable way to approach different like reels, because I feel like you can get really stuck up in doing those you know, particulars of reels. That yeah. said, if I wanted to get this out to Instagram, mm -hmm. um, would I just download that and just free upload it by sending it to my phone? You could, or you could Publish directly to Instagram Boom. with the Instagram scheduler. So That's if you are logged in here, you're able to connect to your Instagram, add your captions, and send it off. Alternatively, you might want to download it. You can have your video right here, and nice. it'll just download right to your uh, files. I don't want to wait for this. All right, fine, 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 fine. Download. <laughs> uh, but I wanted to show you one more. Never mind. <laughs> Go. I need to show you more things. Um, for Instagram, this is like a 15 second reel because this is fi five seconds, five seconds, mm -hmm. five seconds. Too long. In my opinion, too long. Too long, yeah. Too I, long. I'd be tapping through that. Yeah, boring. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to do two seconds. <laughs> boring. For each. <laughs> yeah. You have to be your own worst uh, critic. Yeah, I guess. So that. we're going to do two seconds each. And, you know, ideally, you would find some music on Instagram reels that would match. And now you have an even faster illustration, and you have the ooey gooey. And theoretically, you could even resize this to a different size. I'm scared to do it right now, but yeah. I know it works. But, but it, happens. it works every time. But you can do square post and then hit resize. Look and now you just have to, you know, you got to yeah, make your adjustments, obviously, make for some that, adjustments. But... It's just, I think, this texture. Oh, no. Yeah, because literally everything else is just everything like fine else in is place. Fine, yeah. So then you would just go here and then. Now you have it in square. Um, I love the skull one; it's my favorite. I think. Yeah, I think I like the eyeball one the most. Or, or no, I like the spider one the most. They're they're all kind of fun. Boris. And if I wanna, I just want to show you real quick here on the version I, I had made previously, just so you get a sense of everything you can do here. Um, here's the eyeball one I made previously. I even added texture. You can barely see it here. I added this texture underneath the spider 
maybe I'll boost it so you can see. And I created this texture right in uh, Photoshop. I think the, okay. the prompt was light pink dusty texture. Great. And I was able to add that. And I even created like a smoky texture here. And I animated it as well. Great. Well, so, we are at about time. Um, so that was also, I mean, we got so much done. We brought those illustrations to life from generative uh, AI. And it was really cool seeing your process and seeing it animated. So, yeah. I can't wait to see you guys, see what you guys make using Firefly and AI. Yeah, and we'll be back in like 30 seconds and we'll be in the same chairs, but we'll be doing something completely um, different. Completely different. Uh, so stay tuned and uh, thank you everyone for joining and thank you for being here. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.